men often go awry. So we're getting half the game. In this case, they always go awry. Oh my goodness, we're behind a black screen. That, you know, that's kind of a weird black screen there. I don't know. Hey, folks, welcome back to a brand new show of the Trailer Park Show. I, I, this is that's just so. Oh, I hate to say that. I'm, I'm not trying to say it's racial. I'm not trying to say it's racial. It's dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all black, huh? <laughs> yes. So uh, welcome Boy, back to... I, I stand out. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, sir. <laughs> so welcome back to a brand new show of the Trailer Park Show. We were off last week uh, to celebrate, I guess, the holidays or something? Uh, or fifth, it was the fifth... It's uh, the fifth Monday down here. The real is we only get four shows. That's all we can afford is four shows a month. Oh, they're so, going to go uh, and bless us out here pretty soon. They're going to they're gonna get that taken care of. Oh, oh, there you go. We, we should be coming back. What Actually, you we should be coming go back ahead, on. Keep going, huh? Yes, definitely. Oh, you have to fix the audio? You mean we weren't going out at all? I guess not. I mean, they were showing us, but that was pretty much about it. <coughs> you know, we just saw some pretty pictures. Of Live TV, you know, it's always, that's why <laughs> that's, it's yeah. neighborhood TV. So we're back on, man? I don't know if we're back oh. on or not. Well, we're... Okay. Do we continue talking? I think so. <laughs> so we can, okay, so just to make sure. We Ms. just Bo can't introduce everybody yet until we you know, make sure for sure. True, true. So, Mrs. Pokey, we're good to go then? Uh, oh, oh, we've been knocked out. Oh, there we go. Oh, we're almost there. We're almost there, folks. We just have well, one, more, I don't, I don't one more color screen to take care of here. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's the fun part of, of live TV. Well, yeah, it's say, a, and it's neighborhood TV know. as well, so you know, none of us are actually TV people. Right. You know, and, and like you always say, it's a trailer park show. We are, you always expect I mean, something better. Yeah, and I'm a what? A dump truck driver? Yes. <laughs> you know, like, duh. So, so, so the missus is a Mrs. Dumper. <laughs> we but yes, we're now official, folks, so welcome back. Okay, let's go ahead and do this there again. And go. So welcome back to a brand new episode of the Trailer Park Show. We are here live again. Uh, we were off last week because of the four-show limit that we are given per month. Uh, but we are happy to be here. This is our version of uh, the men's show. Uh, you know, every once a month we try to do a women's show. We did a women's, women's um, program. But now we're doing the men's show, so where we have some um, wonderful people that are here with us that we're going to be talking uh, talking to very shortly. Uh, let me go ahead and do the formal introductions. We have uh, James Slow, Pokey Ritter. Uh, we have the uh, Travis County uh, Outreach Director, uh, Michael Lee. Michael Lee. Um, Gentleman who was with us a couple weeks, two, two, three weeks ago, three weeks ago, ago. Uh, to talk about Juneteenth. <coughs> we also have uh, Isaac Rowe from from the Man in Me and a, and a proud father. Uh, we will go ahead and do some formal introductions about um, Mr. Rowe with us uh, momentarily. Yeah, and of can, course, can we mention anything about Juneteenth? It did go real we will, well, we, didn't and it? we will, we will. And then of course, okay. there's, uh, you got there anyway. Yes, and we also want to uh, say hi to some people that are here on the show. Uh, they were watching uh, the show, I guess, on, on YouTube. They were watching some of our programs, and they wanted to come over. I think these are our viewers, uh, 15 and 16. Oh, boy, we're getting popular. We're, we're, you know, we, we've gone international. Yeah, And now we've true. got 16 Hold viewers it. that are actually watching this stuff. Canada. So, <laughs> so real quick, if I, if I can, I want to do a quick shout-out to, to the one of the young ladies over here. So, can I get a heck yeah? Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> all righty. So, anything you wanted to start before we before we uh, Juneteenth? I know yeah, Juneteenth was good. Next next week, uh, Gavino's still working on his paperwork. To, you know, I think they kind of went out the green card or something. And well, he'll you know be, how it is when you go to Mexico. You know, the, the whole immigration thing. You yeah. know, check your papers. He's not doing it the right way. Well, yeah. Anyway, he's getting his paperwork straight, but he'll be back next week. <clears throat> he's going to be at the Lulac National Convention. And so him and Ace and I think Paul Hernandez is going to come with him next week. So that ought to be a pretty good show. I think we're going to have Representative Paul Workman after that, and on the uh, the 27th, I think it is, we'll have, is that the right, the last, after that, we'll have a, uh, I've already secured a guy who wants to file suit to force the city of Austin to have a independent audit. Oh, nice. It seems they're worried about where the federal funding that goes to the city has gone, or what it's actually been spent on or something. Well, we probably know where it went, you know, like. Let well, <laughs> shall we say left? <laughs> you know, that, well, I mean, no one yeah, that, that might be a little beyond my comprehension ability, but nonetheless. <laughs> Martinez. I mean, uh, did I say that? Out? Did I say that? Out? <laughs> say that Alleg out? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> but yeah, we, but we had. Well, that, the idea was after 10 1, all this was going to be cleared up. But evidently, Seriously? some people wanted right away cleared up. They're right. not going to give them a chance. Correct. So we're going to see. We'll have somebody I'll talk about that. Okay. Excellent. And then also we want to we want to go ahead and, and uh, highlight an event that's going to be happening next week over at Central Texas Gunworks. It's this uh, coming Saturday. This coming Saturday, right with, after uh, the Fatherson Cookout. Yes, 
the Father's Son Cookoff that's going to be held in Maine. We're, we're going to be talking about that in just a little bit. But they also have a Guns and Giggles uh, comedy show, which is done monthly over at Michael Cargill's uh, business, Central Texas Gunworks. You guys got to find them. You guys got to look at, go to the Trailer Park Show, go to Black and Tan Podcast. Yeah. Um, Just gonna go be, to you're Central gonna be seeing, uh, Cargill or Central Texas Genworks, you'll find it. You're going to find, I mean, phenomenal groups of people. And I, I got to go back. It was out. really funny. It was, it, the last time we went they out, did. it was really good. It was good. We got to we gotta go back out there just to go ahead. Let's put it this way. For, for the small nominal fee that you have to pay, you can you can take a friend, you can take a date, you can take your your kid. You know, so long as so long as they understand the adult content that's out there, you know, they, they you'll have a good time. Yeah, it is kind of adult content they joked about. Yes, yes, uh, it but was you'll, you'll fun. enjoy yourselves. Plus, uh, they have the shop that's open, and you'll be able to enjoy the the uh, wide array of uh, shopping if you are. Shop, you know, you can shop there while you want if you want to, and and uh, you know, leave home with a, with a nice little uh, accessory, you know, and 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 sign up for a CHL class. Also, uh, we want to. Uh, Hype up uh, the ever popular show, we, the weekly show on 1370 AM, which is uh, Come and Talk It, which is uh, with uh, Michael, Michael Cargo's Cargill show. Again. Phenomenal yeah, stuff that's going on. I mean, you, you, if you guys get a chance, go to comeandtalkit.com. You will find the podcasts that have been out there. He has been very pro heavy uh, Last talking Sunday about. Was really good. Yes, they're talking about uh, black. His, you know, obviously uh, Cargo has has a big concern about uh, the the deaths that have been going on, especially with, you know with, with the whole Black Lives Matter. Um, with the whole hashtag that was going on and how it's been uh, used. And he's highlighting some of the important things that are happening because of it, uh, especially with Chicago and a few other and a few other choice places where there's high uh, crime that's going on. Black lives matter, but only when they're politically correct. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but that being said, let's go ahead and segue a little bit to, to Mr. Lee, uh, because we had we had a great, uh, well, you can tell us a little bit about the Juneteenth celebration. Uh, we had some people, we had uh, celebrating the, the Emancipation Day. Yes, I'd like to talk a bit about the Juneteenth celebration here in Austin in particular, and in Houston. I understand it was the first time that the Republican Party had parades, floats and parades in both cities at the same time. Yes. <clears throat> and that it was the first one in Austin. One of the things that we suffer from as Republicans, we have a perception problem. We're perceived as caring only about rich white people. No, we, where did we, you get that we, We're supposed to don't care about black people. We don't care about children. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the list of things that, they, that, they, that we claim not to care about is longer than my arm, probably. <laughs> but the, the fact of the matter is that it's not true. It's because we do care. Yeah. And what I'm, what I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to undertake uh, personally in a lot of ways is just to establish a presence. There's been a sort of distance or isolation between the Republican Party and the African American community. Mm -hmm. So I have tried to inject myself in every place that I can in, in, the, in the African American community in Austin. And I'm tr trying to get some help in that process. Mm -hmm. As part of that, one of the things that, that I'm trying attempting to do is contact as many people from nonprofit organizations as possible. Because to, in my view, the African American church has failed the black community and continues to fail. It makes no sense that African Americans can go to church every every Sunday, try to anyway, pray all day on Sunday. Mm -hmm. When I say all day, I mean Sunday school at 9, right. regular service at 11, mm -hmm. afternoon service at 3, BTU at 6. <laughs> pray all day Sunday, <clears throat> and then the second Tuesday of every November, forget about church altogether. Now, in my conversations that I've had with ministers around Austin and other places, I've been informed that actually people separate their politics from their religion. Me personally, I don't know how you separate anything from God, but apparently that's what happens on Tuesday, second Tuesday of every November. <laughs> and the thing that impresses me most in a negative way is African Americans have voted essentially Democratic, I thought 50, 60 years, but I guess we could go back to 1932 with FDR, mm -hmm. which would make it 80 years. Yeah. And things have not improved or changed. Right. Actually, it's gotten worse. <laughs> one of the reasons I was anxious to meet Mr. Rowe here is because at one point I had the fortune, the good fortune to be able to teach at an all-male middle school mm -hmm. in Houston because I learned that African-American males tend to do better in an all-male environment. 
And I think that I know that education in general has failed young African-American men. Mm -hmm. Totally. And no one's talking about doing anything about it. And I don't, I don't understand that. I, was, I go back to the Baltimore situation a lot because it's African-American controlled in the city government and school board. Mm -hmm. And from what I read, it says 55% of the African-American stu students can't read at grade level. That's criminal. And it's wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And no one's saying anything about it. Now, I do have a baby brother who has a Ph.D. in um, philosophy and, and adult education. I think his master's degree is in psychology. Mm -hmm. His position is that the school system is doing exactly as it is intended to do that it is intended to fail, right. that real education is really only for a privileged few. That's his theory. Now, that may be the actual truth, but it shouldn't be that way, and it, sh it can't remain that way. To me, what's happening in the education system, especially as regards young African-American men, is unacceptable. It should be unacceptable to everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, can't, I keep coming back to Baltimore because I understand that in that, in that city, which is African-American controlled, which means they have control of all the money mm -hmm. and the school board, right. and you got a majority of African-American children can't read at the proper level, mm -hmm. that's just wrong. And it's the kind of thing that we as a party should undertake to each try to do something about it, say something if nothing else. But in <clears throat> getting back to my major thing about the African American, African American community and the Republican Party is, it seems that there should be a relationship there. It makes no sense, polit politically or otherwise, to be hostile and at odds with the party that is in control. The Republican Party controls 31 of the 50 state governorships. Mm -hmm. the, House of Representatives, and the Senate. Right. And you're not going to talk to them? That makes no sense. And to me, it's even more offensive that African-American ministers are basically telling their parishioners, given this ruling that came out from the Supreme Court recently, the same-sex marriage uh, ruling. If I don't know. I haven't studied the Bible cover to cover, but I do know there's something about something being an abomination in there. And I don't even need a Bible to tell me that, <laughs> right? But you know, and so I think that we should, that we as a party, need to appeal to their common sense, just common sense. Mm -hmm. Now, me personally, I wish they would put all. I wish they put it all on TV. Every time I see, you see same-sex stuff, they show women kissing. I mean, let's let's get real. Let's just show it all. I I would like them to put those lewd acts on TV and partial birth abortion. See, this is what you say you're for. Let's see it. Just the truth. Mm -hmm. I think we just need to get to the truth and quit playing games because we're messing up people's lives. Right. And we have to do something about it because we're in a position to do something about it, and we should. Right, and, and here, here's a, here, let me add to that part. One of the things that, that I've done is talk to individuals out there, you know, kind of like just to talk about stuff. And... The people will always, no matter what happens, it can be. It doesn't matter who's in charge. They're always going to blame the the the, the pokies <laughs> in the world. You know, the the, the, the white folks that, that that are allegedly in charge. No matter no matter what happens, we we talked. I talked to a friend of mine who, who lived in in, in uh, East Austin. Um, and we talked about the changes that were happening and how everything went on. Who was responsible for that situation? Uh, we talked about stuff that was going on in my hometown of El Paso. And who was in charge of that situation? As you mentioned, it was, it was a very uh, liberal-based uh, people that were in charge. Um, and he refused to acknowledge that the fact that it was that way. And it, and it always went back to the, to the pokies in the world uh, that were the ones that were doing all, all the problems. Um, in those regards, I think the big part that we have to do is just show them the facts. And obviously, most people don't, don't want to hear the facts. And, now, and I'm not going to say that we as a, you know, those that are, are aligned with the Republican Party are not to blame. They have their own faults. We can, we can probably look at some of the cities out there where they, where they were in control, and there's probably some stuff that they've done which is not, not necessarily as bad, but 
along those same lines where there was some type of gentrification, some type of situation where the richer got rich. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying on that end. Okay. I'll except have for to both, except for both. a little bit because I can blame the Republicans for we didn't point this out. As you, you mentioned, Baltimore right here in Austin, the Democrats, the liberals, like I, like I tell Gavino, he's come across, you've heard him. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't blame white man no more. Uh, you want, all your candidates won in the school board. All your programs and policies got put in place, and what did you get? Yeah. Anderson High School closed 1970. Johnson High School failing again. Mm -hmm. uh, the black and the Hisp Hispanic primary schools. Uh, gentrification. Whose fault is that? Like you heard Gavino down at City Hall, he blaming all the liberals. Yeah. Doesn't matter what color they are, they liberals, and they, they program, they, they implemented these programs and policies. All designed, especially in the black community, all designed to uplift the black community. And what did they get them? Right. So, destroyed so school, guess, destroyed I the, families. I guess the big question we would have to ask then is this: Why don't Republicans point that out more? Well, what do we do? How do we there fix? You go. I mean, how do we fix this? I mean, we, we, you know, you know just as well as most of us do that there's an uphill battle that we're going to have. We're going to get beaten down left and right. We got beaten down last year at the Juneteenth, at the, <laughs> at the East pre Fourth of July parade. Uh, oh yeah, they were all at you. They were all they were all getting ready to beat me up because I was a, I was the one Latino person speaking speaking at at a. At a uh, you were a race traitor. I was a race traitor. Yes, as the whatever the term is. From yes. Uh, so how do we how do we fix this? We engage ourselves. Okay. I like. That. We engage ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now I'm encouraged by what happened on Juneteenth. Now, at the Juneteenth parade, we had a float. On that float was Representative Workman mm -hmm. and City Councilman Don Zimmerman. And I was kidding after the, everything was over. I say, at least they didn't, we didn't even get any rocks thrown at us. <laughs> we got some funny looks. Yeah. But oh, obviously. that's okay. Obviously. That's, that's part of <clears throat> after years of neglecting trying to get that vote, mm -hmm. what else could you expect? Yeah. And so, uh, but it went well in that we didn't get Brewed anything thrown at us. So I think I got me, I got cussed out a couple of times. And we got some, what, what, are you, what, are you, what are you guys <laughs> doing here? What are you guys doing here? Yeah. But mm -hmm. I hope that that can become um, a, thing, a, a, a thing of the past. We should be in that every year because it's our holiday. Mm -hmm. It's a Republican created holiday. Yeah. Now, my exactly. baby brother loves, loves to point out that uh, well, Lincoln didn't free the slaves so much because he loved them or that because he thought they were equal. Who cares? Well, he actually did. He actually thought that they were equal. I, I was actually reading some of the, the, um, the, the Douglas debates, and, and uh, he thought that they were equal. He, he was a separatist, though. He didn't want interaction. He didn't want interaction whatsoever. And, in fact, uh, Jerry Patterson, who was the, the uh, head of the agricultural department here, in Texas, he's very big on, on history, Texas history. You talk, you ask him about anything that's going that went on in Texas history when it comes to immigration, slavery, whatever the case may be. Mounds of information, and I had to back and I had to go and I had to research some of the stuff that he said. Um, but yeah, in, in one of the in, in one of the debates, he 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 considered the the African American or the black man, however you want to call it, call him, uh, equals. But he wanted equals, separate but equal. Separate but equal. He, he he never felt he didn't feel that they should be intermix, which is kind of weird. But you know, but then again, that was back then. That was back then. That was back then, and of course, you know, we we we've learned. Minister Lewis Farrakhan says the same thing. Yeah, black boy should go to school with other black boys. Be taught by black man, mm -hmm. not gay. Right, but but you're right. He he did a lot to go ahead and make the change so that so that there was more freedom for for the for the black man and and be able to have an opportunity. Um, which is one of the big things for us that, uh, as a way I like to tell people, regardless of, of your ethnicity, opportunity is, is key in order, to, in order for, su for success. One of the things that I've learned in trying to conduct outreach and engagement activities is that actually many African Americans have been taught to hate Republicans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody. I mean, yeah, all literally parties. hate yes. them. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that they vote that way because their mom or daddy told them to. Mm -hmm. Legacy voters. Yeah. I've been on Facebook trying to get prod some people to tell me why you vote for Democrats. The first thing they talk about is the hate. <laughs> it's the first thing they talk about. And so they've been fed a lot of hate. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that liberalism has, in many ways, incapacitated the black community. It makes you dependent. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You're waiting for someone to give you something. Mm -hmm. And what we are entitled to under the law is an equal opportunity, not a guaranteed outcome. Exactly. And exactly. I, I just don't believe you can give prosperity. This has to be some work done somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I think that people have come to think that they're supposed to get something for nothing. Mm -hmm. During the Juneteenth parade, we were riding down the one road, and they said, oh, the Republican Party, write me a check. <laughs> not, not give me a job, write me a check. Mm -hmm. Those were her very words. <laughs> and some people have been so conditioned to waiting to be given something that the idea of work is a foreign concept. Yeah. Now, I have a little, there's a personal part of my life. And it's, I am from the oldest self-governing all-black community in this entire country. Mm -hmm. It's a little place called Lincoln Heights outside Cincinnati, Ohio. When you cross the river, the Ohio River from Kentucky to Ohio, from slave state to free state, mm -hmm. it was the first area where black folks owned property. The first. Okay. And it was incorporated in 1946 or 7, and for many years it was the only self-governing black community in the whole country. So growing up there, I experienced some things, and in, my, in the process of getting my education, I attended primarily private, predominantly Caucasian, liberal arts, liberal arts college, mm -hmm. and then SMU Law School, which is no bastion of diversity right. at the time. I was probably one of the first 10 African Americans graduating at law school. I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I was, I almost name them all. Mm -hmm. But I, I know where I'm from. And I know what works. I know how to get out of a situation like I was in. And you gotta work. Mm -hmm. You gotta get a goal in your mind and work hard. Yep. I'm not gonna give it to you. I was actually, I was actually turned down for a scholarship by a liberal organization. It was time to go to law school. Mm -hmm. They said, well, Mr. Lee, your LSAT score and your GP are too high. You can get in law school anyway, so you can't get this money. <laughs> Which told me something about what they were looking for. Right. Okay. And I was, and I was heartbroken in a way because I come from a large family of my, both my parents were Mississippi sharecroppers. Mm -hmm. Mama went to the sixth grade, daddy went to the fourth. I had seven brothers and three sisters, eight boys, three girls. Four boys got PhDs. Mm -hmm. I had a brother who was a lawyer, two, two brothers with PhDs in education. But you worked around there. Yeah. And the, and the, and the element of work is, has like disappeared. It's like waving like a bird in the nest, get feed me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, that's not how the world works. You cannot give prosperity. You got to do some work and you got to have some fight in you. Yeah. And you can't, and you can't always win. Right. Which, which, which I, hate, I'm, I'm, I hate to do this, but it's a nice segue uh, for, for our, our, our other guests here. Um, talking about opportunity and talking about work, making it work and making things, giving that chance to, to do better for, for, for themselves and for the, for the children, uh, where we have Mr. Mr. Rowe, uh, Mr. Isaac Rowe, who's part of uh, themanandme.org. Um, we, we met actually, I, I, I know you've been on the show about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, you and I met uh, with Pokey at, at a uh, Right for Life uh, event with, uh, with the late Mr. Uh, Mr. James Gandhi yeah. uh, and, and Mari Gandhi, who, who invited us to the event. Um, I, 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 wanted to share this mo I wanted to share this story with you guys and, and with everybody that's on uh, or watching. Um, we said we were we were invited. We thought we were going to sit with with the Gandys, sit at the big table. Okay, we were we thought we were going to sit with the, all the big boys. You know, we're like, we're going to sit. With the, you know, it's yeah. going to be great. And we got pushed to the side, and we got and we sat down to the farthest table out yeah, there. It was. Okay, very very discreet, very quiet. And well, we're that's like, right. you know, it was delicious. So we, <laughs> so we sat yeah. far away from everybody. Way off in the corner. But um, way in the corner, you know. I'm like. I don't think they're trying to say something, but I, you know, that's, that's because of the way the seating arrangement was. But I gotta say, that was probably the best seating ever. Mm -hmm. 
because we had the opportunity to talk to to you and, and your lovely wife. That's um, right. Yeah, that's we, right. We, we sat down. We we we, we talked. We, we ate together. Uh, we saw Pokey eat a whole bunch of pie. I got uh, all the pumpkin cream pie oh, I wanted. <laughs> exactly. And, it was but we delicious. Got, but we got to talk a lot about what you're doing. And and uh, um, I think I was too busy eating pumpkin pie because. Yeah. yeah, I almost forgot all about that. That's right. It, it, it was, it was, it, and, I, and the reason why it, it's important, if uh, you know, I'm able to remember the stuff. Is hey, they were going to throw it all away. True. So, you know. True. But the reason why it, it was important to me, what, what you, were, you, and, you and your wife were saying, was because, I mean, in my situation, I told you my situation right, of being right. a single father, raising my daughter, um, you know, for, for however long it was, um, and how you're trying to reach out to, and we'll, and, we'll, and we'll ask you to, to expand a little bit on this uh, momentarily, on how you're trying to reach out to those individuals who want an opportunity and want the chance to become better parents, mm -hmm. become better fathers. So if, if possible, uh, if you can tell us a little bit more about, about what you're doing um, with The Man and Me, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Um, that way the people here can, can, uh, can hear what's going on about you. Okay. I mean, it's just uh, uh, hold on here a minute. Y'all make me feel guilty now. That was you can You got to admit that was some delicious pumpkin pie. It was I, okay. I'm not gonna. I'm they not gonna lie. It was delicious. It I, I, now I only had one slice. Pokey had the rest. We tried. You know, we, we weren't able to. We weren't able to get. They were gonna get throw all, it all away. No, like, you, it was you, so delicious. you didn't let us get any. You're like, oh, I'll take that one over here. There was like five extra pieces of <laughs> yeah, pie yeah, in that table. Yeah, on the whole table. <laughs> the whole table. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. And he's like, I'll get this one right here. Take this one. Take this one. Pumpkin cream pie. They're not here. Exactly. I'd never had pumpkin cream. You know, pumpkin pie. What? This was pumpkin cream pie. It was just. You know, you know, you know. Now you know what you have to do next, right? You still taste it. Oh yeah. You, uh, yeah, you now have to go to these Right to Life events. Yeah, I don't oh, mind. And the, the, the whole dinner was delicious. Yes, it was. It was salmon, uh, some very delicious mm -hmm. salmon. Very good. Very the salad good. was a little weird, but yeah, the pie made up for it. Anyway, I'm sorry. Right. We are. You're this good. is you're important good. what you're doing there. <laughs> oh, well, man. I remember. I wish well, I brought some pictures of that. Uh, I sent a picture of it on the ball. Oh, okay. Pictures, Shut up. pictures out there somewhere. Probably in the bed. <laughs> probably sits in the background somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Way in the back. <laughs> like this eating. So, yes. yeah. Hey, my wife is really, really good in the kitchen. And I'll tell, just make me some of this stuff right here. It was. I'm sorry. Go ahead. He's good. That's good. That's I'm good. supposed to shut up more here. <laughs> well, our. Or, <laughs> Our organization, um, the Man and Me, uh, we wanted to educate, strength, and support our men and fathers in, in the community, and giving them the men and fathers an opportunity to uh, not only just be able to become better men, uh, but better fathers as well. And so we have like men talk workshops uh, every month that we able to meet, be able to share our life experiences, be able to share, hey, what are you going, what are you going through? You know, mm -hmm. share our, our accomplishments, our successes, and really be able to learn from one another. Because I may not know what you know, but you might help me because you've already been through the storm already. Right. You know, and so we're all in this together as men to be like, hey, you know, we're gonna sharpen one another. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna build this brotherhood, a network of, of male men, and we're gonna walk this out as men, as, as brothers, as fathers, as male mentors and role models, as father figures as people in the community, you know, who want to uh, achieve more and have these, and we all have these opportunities. We're talking about opportunity. And that, you know, it's it, it for, for me, for my opinion from uh, looking at it, coming from a single parent home, is that starts in the home, you know? You know, for me, just growing up, it starts in the home. And that's why, and especially a man is very important mm -hmm. uh, in the home. And so we talk about education and the, the kids getting a, a fair shot at education and uh, doing well in school. It really comes from, from the home or how they were raised and how their the upbringing, because me personally, I didn't have the very good upbringing. You know, it was very rough and very rugged. And so coming from that environment and having uh, still the opportunity, but not as opportunity as it, all the other kids. And so um, that's why it was very passionate to me to, to really understand and really want to get in there with the men, so. Excellent, excellent. So how, how long have you, how, or how long have you been, or how, the man and me been around? Uh, about three and a half years. Three and a half years, yes, three and a half years. So now on the, um, 
You, you mentioned about talking to the talking to the to the to the men that want to, I guess, be better. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the people that, that are coming that you see that are coming in. I mean, you we we share you shared a little bit about some of the people, mm -hmm. basic stuff. You didn't give us specifics. Yeah. Saying, well, there's this guy named Bob. No, well, give specifics. You know. But but like the people that are in, that, that are coming in, they're saying, hey, I need help. Yeah. So how, I mean, what, tell us a little bit about those people. Um. Well, you look at those people, man. They, you know, those those brothers. They are wonderful people. Uh, they have a heart that that's just. They want to do more. They want to do better, and they don't know how to do that. And mm -hmm. so sometimes you you're able to pull along somebody and be like, hey, show me the way. Mm -hmm. Show me the way. I don't really know where to go, but they're very hungry. Someone they come in there hungry, like, hey, I need to get my driver's license. I need to get this. I need to. You know, I'm trying to take my family to a whole other level. I'm trying to get this education. What can I do? What can I do? How can I get here? How can I get there? And so they're able to, uh, some of them are able to get their driver's license, um, able to be better fathers as far as working on uh, the parenting skills and how to communicate with another man. That's very important. I think, you know, as men that we don't know how to communicate with one another. You know, sometimes there's a little competition or a man beating competition or, you know, we're just kind of like <laughs> sizing each other up, you know, if you got the better car, you got the better wife or something like that, but really said on the same plane that like we all, we all men and just like, hey, we're able to communicate now, you know, so I, I see the growth and the men, especially, you know, I'm giving you very general versus yeah. specific. And, and, and I, I, you've actually expanded a little bit yeah. from what we talked about the last time. One of the, yeah. one of the things that was very interesting, that I found very interesting was that the people that you, that you said were coming, these were fathers who wanted to become be a part of the lives the the the, the, the mothers of the children have had either booted them out because right. they weren't having to pay because they were having a hard time paying child support or they right. were refusing to pay child support mm -hmm. or they couldn't find a steady job or whatever the case yeah. may be and they were had finally it had finally clicked in their heads that they needed to do something better for their children and better for their lives and you were helping them with with uh, with the with the manami sessions with the monthly yeah. sessions on on talking to them to try to say, okay, you know, it's possible, and yeah. you were and you were working with them um, to try to get them to become better and yeah. be able to say, yeah, it, it's going to be a rough road, and it's going to be a tough road out there to yeah. go ahead and, and, and do this. And, and when it comes to the opportunity, mm -hmm. um, you're either going to have it or you may not have it, but at least you're making the attempt, and you may not mm -hmm. get to the level that you want to. Right. So, so based on what you're saying right now, is that it's actually expanded from from what. I guess what what was going on about a year ago, where you're now having people that are saying, "Okay, I want to do more," and and you're and it seems like you're you're getting people who are actually in committed relationships with with a, with a significant mm -hmm. other, who are trying to become better parents mm -hmm. and, and be better men. Yeah, wow, that's phenomenal. Yeah, so you, you know, within a year's time, that's phenomenal. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at you know from men from all walks of, of of life, and you know some of them are single, some of them are in relationships, some of them are married. Mm -hmm. um, you de you're dealing with men who have multiple baby mothers, and so how do they deal with that? Child support is very getting them. They only have a hundred dollars to the name for the whole week. You know, and 60 of it is gas. So how do I eat for that week? Right. So it's like, how do we balance and how do we move and work together uh, as one? And one of the things that we did um, with the child support, actually, when you mentioned that, was that we raised, uh, I think it was a 11, 1120, I think 1120, $1,120 uh, to get caught up on somebody's child support in three days. Wow. That's huge. Like it was three days, three days. So we're able to do that. The guy said, hey, uh, I don't know. I've been working with the lawyer. I've been trying to get, but we got, sometimes we got the mothers, the baby, of the, mm -hmm. you know, mother of the child is wanting money. So, you know, that's just one case. Not all, all of them are like that, but we're just, <laughs> that's just one case. And there's just like, I just want money. I want more money. And he was trying to get caught up on what he was trying to do. And he said, they're going to take me to jail or else I pay this. Mm -hmm. And we were able to come together as a brotherhood and be able to raise that money. And so he, everybody who went into the court went to jail but him at that <laughs> session. So, it's, it, you know, it's really good to, to see yeah. us come together in unity and do something. And so uh, all, all men, man, anything, anything you can think of, yeah. I'll, I'll go out there and I'll find it. I, don't, I, don't, I may not have the resources. I'll go out and find the resources for education mm -hmm. or whatever. You want to take some classes or you want to know more about this. My job is to go find it, nice. you know. There is an organization here called Meals that helps 
persons who have what they call challenged backgrounds, that's a person with a felony background and been mm -hmm. in prison, they try to help them. And along that helpline, I wanted to, I forgot to mention this, but I want to throw this in since you mentioned opportunity. One of the things that uh, maybe not too many people know about that we've been able to get a change of trying to, as Gabe said, our party has not always been viewed very sympathetically, nor has it always acted sympathetically or reasonably in my view. But one of the things that we've been able to, been able to make happen is get a commitment that these elected officials have interns that look like me and you. Okay. And that's a, kind of a new program. I don't know that I've mentioned it before because it's, <clears throat> we really just got the firm commitment to have those. And those are the kinds of opportunities usually that are reserved. I've worked on the Democratic side and Republican side. On the Democratic side is if your mama knows somebody. In this situation, it's not a matter of who you know. It's a matter of there's an opportunity there. If you have the commitment, the, the ability and the commitment to want to do it, it's there. But I'm, I would be showing up at your thing, at your event, hoping I don't get in a fight. Cause <laughs> No, you're I'll good. Be I'll, 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 I'll be there. I got your back. That's, I'm going to come out for work. That's what happens at the barbershop. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's good. I'll be, I'll if I go to, if I go to the barbershop on Chicago and 12, yeah. and go, go in there, with, pull, pull that out, no telling Mike what'll happen. But, uh, you know, uh, my thing is to try to get the Republican Party to afford opportunities to people that they haven't afforded them before and that they should do. Mm -hmm. We should be more diverse. And we should make a commitment, and we should take action, not just run off at yeah. the mouth, yeah. but do something. Yeah. Now, I've been trying to find me some, some young college students who might be interested in internships. The legislature is out of session now, but it'll be back in session in two years. And those kinds of opportunities are there, and I need to let people know that. That's one of the reasons I'm going to get out here and hope, hopefully not get in a fight. Mm -hmm. But those are the kinds of opportunities. I wish I had had them, but I didn't. But in my mind, it's up to people like me to try to have those opportunities available for those who come after me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would have loved to have worked in a, in a senator's, on a senator's staff, Carrie May or whatever, because it puts you in touch with people. Yeah. And, and it gives you an opportunity to see, uh, see things that you otherwise would not have seen. And it affords you an opportunity to grow and learn. And those are the kinds of things that we need mm -hmm. and that the Republican Party can can afford, can afford to do that and should do it. And in my view, and to my understanding, it's just now made the commitment to do just that. That's excellent. That's actually a really good thing on that part. What, so. what kind of uh, qualifications? I've known a couple of, we've both known a couple of interns. They've always been law students. Do you have to be in college to be an intern? Or? It helps to be a college student if you're Maybe, interested. Uh, yeah, I hope. but Houston Tillerson is opening up in August. I've been trying to get some referrals from teach professors who are in town, but I, sh I should have no trouble. I'm thinking there shouldn't be any trouble once school starts, right. but they need to know that, and I have to let them over there know yeah. that that opportunity exists. Understood. So you mentioned about, about you mentioned about uh, about an event uh, that you're going to be going to, and I'm going to be going going there as well because it's a and meeting. there won't be any cream pumpkin pie. You, there won't be any yeah, cream pumpkin pie, nice. but the, from what I understand, there's going to be a lot of meat. A lot of meat. So, so tell us a little bit about the, about the Father Son Cookout. Yeah, well, Father Son Cookout, and um, it's gonna be uh, July 11th. Mm -hmm. We got some uh, pictures there. Of, of some July, of oh yeah, we got the brisket, and you know we just got a little start going. Uh, the brisket, hot dogs, uh, chips, you name it, soda, water. Uh, we're gonna have everything. Uh, Twelve from twelve to four. When is that? This Saturday. This this, this coming Saturday? up Saturday. This, this coming Saturday. Saturday. Okay, so I don't have to eat Friday. Right, exactly. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, exactly. you got to eat on Friday. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's free. Um, you know, you just come that, and uh, come hang out with oh, us. Oh, there's the directions. No, those aren't directions. <laughs> Not directions? Okay. <laughs> well, that's just what you posted there on the... Uh, for, oh, the man, no. for the man of me event. Oh, really? Or, or for the, I don't know where that came from. The purpose of... Yeah, it's on your face. I think it's on yours. Yeah. It's online. It's to bring uh, men, men together. Uh, let me go ahead and squint there a little bit. Go ahead and squint. <laughs> you want me to read it? 
Uh, you are invited to the Man and Me's annual father and son cookout July 11th at East Metropolitan Park in Manor, Texas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All males of Central Texas and surrounding areas are invited to the male only event. Uh oh. The Fibonacci's aren't going to attack us, are they? No, nah, no. Nah. Uh, too bad. That'd be too, too much. Uh, anyway, men, uh, <coughs> men bring your sons, nephews, cousins, uncles, for, and friends. The purpose of this event is to bring men together in unity on one, one accord. Posit a positive, filled environment of men, young men, fathers, and sons. We will be hanging outdoors doing man things. Yeah. Uh huh. We will eat whatever the hell we want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that on the show. Uh, I have to let it to myself. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ad yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. lib. He ad lib. Uh, let's try this again. We will eat and enjoy whatever the hell we want. Uh, we will eat and enjoy smoke and grill the food. Music by the one and only DJ Crash. DJ Crash. Yeah. Uh, dirty womanizer. <laughs> of the dirty worms. Dirty worms, okay. Dirty, dirty woman. That'd be an interesting guy. That'd be an interesting <laughs> Athletic <laughs> activities. I've seen that there. the man game, uh, jumping the tire. Uh, uh, yeah, strong man competition. Strong, uh, uh, dominoes, cards, video yeah. games. Base, yeah, you had a little trailer full of nice. video games for the kids that were Yeah, time. yeah, big, big big thing, yeah. Let's show some of that later. Uh, basketball and our legendary strong man strong competition. competition. Yeah, that's the big one. A donation per adult is welcome. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, one of the things that 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 Pokey mentioned about the, about uh, about the event, it's it's going to be for men only. Yeah. Um, so, tell us a little bit why you wanted to have as a men only, and 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 you and I talked about this a little bit beforehand because you know I'm a single dad of a, of a girl mm -hmm. who won't be able to go, and, yeah. and and granted she's probably like that's fine, I don't want to go. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, tell us a little bit about as to why why uh, um, why men only. Yeah, um, men only, because as you, as you can see in, in our society, in our community, that uh, our men... That's uh, last year there, huh? Our men are, are not present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was last year. Our men are not present. Uh, we got a lot of fatherless men. I think there was a... I got, did a study uh, recently. It was like 50,000 um, fatherless children around in the Austin area. I said, that's a big that's thing. That's a big number. That's a big number. I was like, I was like, I was like in the Austin around areas. Like, yeah. In, and I deal with organizations who deal with them on a daily basis. So it's just like, no, single mother, all the whole thing, single mothers. I'm like, really? And they got two or three kids. And I was like, well, we need to get our men together. I, I, you know, I was like, we, if we get the men together and, and, and uni in unity and one accord and we, we go, hey, what's going on with our, in our community, uh, regardless of race, regardless of what, whatever's going on, if I'm Hispanic, black <coughs> or white or Asian or Indian or whatever, because this is this is an issue that why are we leaving our children? Why why are we leaving? Why are we just leaving like that? And I, I wanted to just connect with our sons, you know, mm -hmm. because now what it is what is happening is that now the once fatherless male is now an adult, and now he does the same thing, and now he does the same thing, mm -hmm. and now he does the same thing. And so now we got this generation of fatherlessness, five, six generations, because no one never s took the initiative to say, hey, I'm going to teach my son. I'm going to spend time with him. So we got that time to be able to develop and sharpen uh, relationship between father and son mm -hmm. and their nephews and their cousins or uncles or whoever the father figure is. Or, and, and young men who don't have a father, they're able to see positive men out there, uh, like-minded, just being, just having fun, you know, just enjoying one another. And you might be able to pick up, you know, some, some things from other men or hear something from another man or, or watch how that man moves and how he walks and how he talks because mm -hmm. I want to be, I have nothing to look up to. Mm -hmm. And so now we want to be able to bring that together. And that's what it was really on my heart to do that for the first two years to really like, hey, it's about us. We, we need to come together. It's not to neglect the women. The women are very powerful in, in their own right. It's just like you can't, they're just, when women get together, you say something's going on, they don't mind paying for it. They don't mind spending $100 to get it done or whatever the case may be. When it comes to the men, it's like, I don't, I don't have it. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to connect. I don't know how to get there because we're not, we're not them. But, 
you know, but we can get together. And I just wanted us to just really come together and sharpen one another. Now, you mentioned one of the one of the interesting things about this was um, you you made a comment about how men how men react with their sons versus how they react with their daughters. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. in this event, you want them you want the men to act like men towards their sons mm -hmm. because we have to treat we have to treat our, 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 our young ladies or our young yeah. daughters um, differently. Yeah, um, we have to you know. Treat them, put them on, a, and I do this with my own daughter. Put her on, put them on a pedestal, and yeah. show them, the you know what you have to do. Yeah. And, but here with the guys, you're like, okay, let's go for it. Let's go to play. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you can roughhouse with them a little bit more than what you can with with a, with a yeah. young lady. Um, not saying that you can't, but in general, you, you they're a little bit they're a little bit more delicate, and you don't yeah. want to upset them, and, and and you want to still keep that semblance of innocence and and and. and girliness. Yeah. In them yeah. as opposed to to the guys. Yeah. Absolutely. So. And then, of course, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing on that part. He didn't exactly say it in that way. I'm doing it that way. I'm saying it that way because, you know, I have my daughter that I tried to make sure she was as girly, girly as possible. I'm just saying yeah. it that way. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you know, I married my wife, and that's my queen. Mm -hmm. You know, that is my queen. That is ev She's everything to me. That's why I work hard and bust my tail every day because I want her to be able to take care of my daughter. So and, and what I want to be able to, I would like my daughter to come. Yes, I would like her to come. But this is specifically for the men that, you know, and the son. So it's just uh, I want her to to uh, just understand that there's 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 male and there's female, mm -hmm. you know, you know, that, you know, you can't go out there and do all those things like that. You know, there's a, there's a certain way that women carry themselves than men, mm -hmm. you know, and how we talk to one another. Right. We, me and you might talk differently than you might talk to your wife or whatever, you know? So it just, it's just a little difference, you know, just yeah. a little difference. It's a little difference. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna smooth talk my wife, and, <laughs> you know, how you're talking to your wife, but it's just like, yeah, I'm gonna try to, you know, say you, I can't do that to my son, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, look, son, I'm about to show you how, how you need to be, what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. This is what you need to, this is how you shave. Mm -hmm. You know, this, these are certain things that men teach other men. So, excellent, man. excellent, and, yeah, and no, no drugs or booze either. Huh? No, no drugs, no, no, none of that. All positive, all positive, all positive all, music. For a lot of kids, that's the only male role model they have is some guy in the corner getting <laughs> yeah. high yeah. all day every yeah. day. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the real society. How long has this been going on? Oh, this is our second year. Second year? Yes, this is our second year of doing the father son cookout. So, okay. um, next year we will be doing. We're opening up to uh, all. To all, Excellent. yeah. So Excellent. that is one of the things that we just we need to have that foundation of the male, mm -hmm. of the men male presence, and so it's still going to be men geared and focused. It's just that we're going to allow, um, you know, the women to actually come in and, and help, and the daughters come as well, and uh, just distinguishing uh, certain events because most of the stuff that we have is real like. Very dominant. It's very heavyweight. I don't. I like the pictures of the uh, you know, man uh, uh, dumping the tire and, yeah. and racing dragon wood. And My heart won't take yeah. that one. Sorry, I won't be playing that game. You don't play that? <laughs> no. Come on, man. No, Yo, no. I think you'd be out there right away. I'll be, I'm doing that, I'm doing that with, with other things at, at, at my other job and lifting up heavy stuff. But anyway, that's another story together. Um, we were looking at the pictures and we noticed that there was a book. Uh huh. That, that in yeah. fact you brought a couple you brought a couple copies yeah. and so tell us a little bit about that about that that's actually I love awesome. anger. Yeah, you so would think why, how is it how did you come up with the title I love anger? Oh man, that's a good question. I'm gonna ask a question on it. Um, at a time I I, I loved anger. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's what the real the realness of it is is that right I really loved anger, and uh, anger was everything to me, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I it was it ruled my controlled my life. And so, in a positive or negative way? In a negative way, it did. In, in, in a negative way. And so it led me to do a bunch of different things, destroy, you know, relationships, and just do a lot of crazy, foolish stuff mm -hmm. because I didn't know how to handle my, an my anger. I didn't know what was really going on with me. And so I was engulfed because that was the only thing I knew. I didn't know what love was. I didn't know what happiness was. All I knew was hate and pain and anger. Mm -hmm. And so anger was my love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and and when I when I talk about it, that, I actually use anger to be able to to bring me to my purpose. So, nice. yeah, I can either turn my my pain into pity or my pain into purpose. 
And so I use anger to channel it in a different direction mm -hmm. after, after understanding what anger really is. Right. And then redirecting it in a positive direction. So now you just recently wrote this stuff. Yes. Uh, dropped it in January. Oh, nice. Just nice. released in January. So where, and where can they find the book? It's, it's basically online at this present time? You haven't found any play, in the bookstores or anything? That yes. Um, in certain Hastings around on my book tour, I have some, some mm -hmm. there. That's a good place. That's a yeah, that's a good place. Yeah. I got some in Hastings, like in uh, Seguin, um, Colleen, Waco, Conroe. Good places. Good places. For um, that, that I went on my book tour. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, Amazon, <laughs> Amazon.com, Barnes and Nobles. is also on Barnes and Nobles. So you can get it there. Is uh, it at the bookstore or online? Online. online. Yeah, oh, online. Okay. So definitely it's online. Excellent, excellent. And and just so that you just so that you know, if you go on there, it's reasonably priced uh, for the for the book. Um, you'll be able to get a whole book. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to go ahead and, and purchasing the book and be able to. Uh, I actually have some students that I've interacted with uh, just recently that may benefit. Okay, cool. From this, uh, some young kids that that. Um, that are going through some of those changes that you mentioned mm -hmm. and that may benefit from this whole thing. So definitely, I'm going to definitely, uh, it will be definitely worth an investment for me to go ahead and, and help them out in, in that regards. So, um, so the first book, so now you're your official publisher and I mean, you're yes. your official author and, and what, what type of reaction have you gotten <coughs> from this? I mean, you, you've been on the book tour then. Yeah, I went on my book tour. So, so, um, so how did, what type of reaction did you get? A lot of excitement mm -hmm. and then a lot of silence. Okay, then why silence? <laughs> Were they like wanting to hear, or they're like? They, it's Come on. it's one of those things like oh, just you get a lot of excitement like oh, it's a good book, it's it's this, it does this, but it's 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 a it's really deep, mm -hmm. it's really deep, and so the fact is that when you read it, it's like I sparked and provoked so much thought because that's what I do. Mm -hmm. That's what we do in men talk. We provoke a lot of thought and changing your mind. And if we can change your mind, you can change your life. And so I provoke a lot of thought and to get you to see those areas in your life. And I, you know, I'll walk you through my life and let you see some of the things and reflect on your life as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it, it's, it's usually when you, when you read it, nobody really says too much. They just said, it's, that book was, that book was, they, it just gets speechless. You know, they just get and speechless. And that's the way it should be. Yeah, I was just <laughs> like, they're just like, if you get that book, Trust me, it's gonna, you know, it's just one of those things like they can't explain it mm -hmm. uh, in simple words. Right. You know, so you, you have to read it to understand that's what I, I, now I know what you meant by that because I didn't know that was really going on. I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. You know, now I have a better understanding and I never saw that different, that perspective of anger. So that's what I mean. So now, has, has it been mostly adults that have read, read this book, or are you getting some kids that are reading this? Some also? youth, uh, definitely some youth. Um, definitely, I know I speak at a couple of different organizations mm -hmm. uh, with youth and stuff. So I've done some little classes and little workshops. That's why I have my little training workbook. Oh, nice. And so I have a training workbook as well. Uh, so I do like I'm an anger management specialist, so I'm able to you know, kind of teach education or anger management and some tips and tools and stuff. No, we're gonna have to hurry up here. You also got some film work coming out? Yes. Your documentary? Can yes. you quickly do all that? We got about five minutes. Okay, okay. And I uh, did want to speak, speak on some other things. Maybe I'll throw in mind real quick on the, uh, 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 the education thing. Since me and Gable have been into this education thing, and he's into it even bigger. I seem to uh, now have come to understand that uh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade, those at that age period, is so important for for the male yes mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. it's i guess you would agree with that mm -hmm. if you that's a good good time to yeah okay we're yes. just Hor homo let's put it Study. this way they're, they're developing into young teenagers hormones are being released and they don't know how to manage that yeah, because of the, that's and, and the time primer, they need the male they, they would figure. need a, a, a strong male figure you can have a male figure dope and no well that too but you can, you can have a male figure and I, i've met some kids that are in that situation and they've had they have male figures in their, in their family, but they're not strong enough to handle, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, um, they may not be strong enough to handle that, those changes because one, they don't know how, they don't know how to deal with it themselves or they don't know how to, ha they don't know how to manage it. Or as Mike, uh, uh, Isaac yeah. said, they, they, they may come from a family where he didn't have a daddy. Exactly. Yeah. To show exactly. him how. Yeah. So that, that's something that, yeah, they, that's. And that, that's usually what I deal with, mm -hmm. adult and youth, is that there's no father. There's no father. There's so no there's father. A, the father now had no father. He don't know how to be a father. Right. So. I won't get into my story about that, but. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little quick about the documentary. The uh, documentary is going to, uh, we're filming. It's, um, it's, a, it's from, 
this brings to bring awareness of fatherlessness so it's gonna be we're doing it shooting it like from father from boyhood to father malehood to fatherhood and so we're giving different perspectives on like what it, what, what was a transition between um, you becoming a boy and becoming a man what mm -hmm. was that you know what was that like for you being a boy what was what was the certain factors in your life? Was your father present? What was, what is, you know, was he not? How, how did you become successful where you are today? And from manhood and just things that how you, that you know today and what you learned from or you, you picked up from some mother or your father or whatever. And from fatherhood, how's that changed your life from being a father? From coming from a boy to a man to a father, how was that experience and being able to captivate those 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 moments in real life moments from real men who say well i did have a father i didn't have a father how what you know what was the influence in their life right and how has it affected them and so we just want to bring awareness of fatherlessness and and uh, just be able to just reach the world with that and so what 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 expected release date are you looking for the uh, hopefully next year. Oh, nice. Next year. So we, we got a, it's a yeah, it's a pretty lengthy project mm -hmm. uh, that we're, you know, just shooting. Um, and what else? Yeah. So it's, it's going to be throughout this year. And then we'll probably release somewhere about this time next year. Oh, excellent. So. Excellent. Mr. Lee, did you, Mike Lee, did you have anything you want to add oh. to it? Oh, it's it. two no. minutes. I was just kind of smiling at the, uh, at the title because... My baby brother, who everybody's going to meet at some point one day, he swears I angered my way through high school, college, and law school. <laughs> he says I was one big ball of anger. Yeah, excellent. But I was, I was able to, I was angry about some things, but I was, I was mad enough that I wanted to show the world I could do this yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I turned it into. It's passion. I turned it into a positive. Yeah. Absolutely. Anger is described as energy and as passion mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So the only thing about anger is that most people will only see negative because that's right. all they've already seen is negative. So, yeah. Excellent. Well, we want to thank you, uh, thank everybody for being on the show. Uh, Isaac Rowe from uh, The Man and Me, excellent organization. And Go we'll on out there next Saturday. Uh, next Saturday. Uh, Blake Mater, just look up. Bring your fishing poles. Well, nice. I'll, I'll, I'll Keep there. five. I'll be there. Key five, yeah. We'll become, I'll be leaving. I'll be going straight from work over there. I'll be a little bit dirty because I'm, I'm, You're being, good. I'm getting my hands all dirty and all that stuff. Um, but I'm definitely going to be there. Right. Um, Mike, Michael Lee, thank you very much for being here on the show again, talking thank about you, uh, Juneteenth. And, and we We're hope to have, have you have Michael, Michael back on. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Powerful words and powerful stuff that, that's coming coming from this man right now. You have and, to have and, Isaac uh, on more often, too. Not so long in between shows. Exactly. And the impact he's, and, and impact. Uh, Michael's bringing into the uh, outreach program for the TCRP. Uh, Pokey, uh, I know we got 15 seconds. Yeah, uh, next week we got, got the LULAC going to be on. You might want to be there for that. Uh, we got a couple more shows coming on. We don't know what's happening in August, but hey, uh, stick with us. I'm, I'm going to try to pay more attention to the uh, trailerparkshow.com. Check us out. Bye bye, folks. Woohoo! <laughs>